Hi grade elevens, welcome back for another lesson. Today's lesson is sort of like a two-in-one. The majority of the lesson is about creative writing, but there's also a very short piece of language that links up with this work which you need to do first. For the language activity, you are going to read through the specialized vocabulary used for meetings on page 90. Then you are going to do activity 2 on page 91. This specialized vocabulary will give you a good indication of who the specific people are that attend a meeting and what their roles are during the specific meeting. Then you are going to do the creative writing section of the activity. For the creative writing section, you are going to write a notice for a meeting, agenda for a meeting, as well as the minutes of a meeting. I have included an example of each of these three things at the end of the lesson. Firstly, a notice of a meeting is like a reminder that you need to keep this day and date open for the specific meeting. It is very short, only giving you the reason for the meeting, the place where the meeting will be held, as well as the time and date of the meeting. It's similar to a save the date so that you can plan your things ahead of time and make sure that you have time available to attend the specific meeting. Then we are going to look at an agenda for the meeting. An agenda of the meeting can often be handed out when the notice is sent out or the agenda can be handed out when the people get to the meeting. The agenda is like the program for the meeting. It outlines the specific topics to be discussed at that specific meeting. Then finally, we get the minutes of the meeting. The minutes of the meeting is the last thing about the meeting to be handed out to people. But the minutes of the meeting will only be handed out to people after the meeting has been concluded. There is someone that takes notes during the meeting and this person needs to go and put all these notes together which will eventually be handed out to the people after the meeting. This is helpful because someone that couldn't attend the meeting can always read through the minutes of the meeting and then they will know exactly what has been discussed in the specific meeting. Here is an example of my notice for parents meeting. Mine says, Notice of parents meeting. A meeting will be held to discuss the new school uniforms for 2021. The meeting will take place at Sonnefeld Academy on 1 October 2020 from 1800 hours. Then it's my signature and then my name and who I am, Al Smith, phase Z for grade 8 to 12. You can see in my notice of the meeting that I've told you what the meeting is about, where the meeting will take place, when the meeting will take place, as well as the time. Now for the agenda to my meeting. I said to you at the top, agenda for the parents' meeting to be held at Sonnefeld Academy on 1 October 2020. Keep in mind that the information that you put here needs to correspond with the information that you sent out in the notice of the meeting. As you can see in my agenda, I'm outlining all the specific points that will be discussed during the meeting. So, point number one will be the welcoming. Point number two will be who is present at the meeting and who is perhaps absent. Point number three will be for apologies. Point number four, minutes of the previous meeting. Point five, matters arising. Point six, school uniforms. Point seven, any other business. Point eight, proposed date and time of next meeting. And point nine, closure. Each of these points will now be discussed when I go through the minutes of a meeting. My minutes of the meeting now says, again at the top I'm referring to the specific meeting that has been conducted, meaning the parents meeting held at Sonnefeld Academy on 1 October 2020. Now you can see that all the points mentioned in the agenda is now elaborated on. So by welcoming, I'm now filling in who opened the meeting. So our meeting was opened with prayer by Mrs. Sonia Uester. Then I go to point two, present. By present, I am going to fill in the teachers' names attending the meeting 
And I can also attach an attendance register which the parents signed that attended that specific meeting. When you fill in the present point in your minutes of the meeting, you list the people's names that attended that specific meeting. By point three, apologies. This is where you list the people's names who weren't able to attend the specific meeting. Normally, before the meeting, you will receive apologies of people who won't be able to make the meeting. So when you write the minutes of the meeting, you fill in the people's names as well as the reasons why they couldn't attend the specific meeting. If someone is, however, absent from the meeting without an apology, you also need to write these people's names down, but this time you will only say absent without a reason. Then by point number four, minutes of the previous meeting. This is usually where the minutes of the previous meeting will be read to the people attending the specific meeting. Questions will be asked about the minutes of the previous meeting. Point number five actually fits in with point number four. If there are any matters arising from the previous minutes of the meeting, these points will now be discussed by point five. If there aren't any, by matters arising, it might just say none. Then comes point six. This is the main reason why the meeting was held. It's about school uniforms. So you can now see that under point six, I have now sub points where each specific thing will be discussed in details. So in my agenda by point six, I only had school uniforms, but because the minutes of the meeting are about notes taken during the meeting, you can see that we have elaborated on point six. So now I've included all the different things that were discussed during the specific meeting. Point seven is for any other business. These are any other points arising that people want to speak about or that people want to discuss while the meeting is held. This might not necessarily relate to point number six. It can be anything else that is of importance that need to be discussed. Point eight is a proposed date and time of the next meeting. Normally, a date and time is suggested and then the people agree or disagree. Often, they agree on the first date and time given. Obviously, things can happen in future that might need to, re might need to ask to reschedule this specific date and time. Then finally, point nine, the closure. This is where the meeting ends. Everyone attending the meeting will now be thanked for attending the meeting and be bid a safe trip home. You will, however, see that at the end of the minutes of my meeting, I have four extra things written down. It says to you, approved at. This is where you fill in the place name where the meeting was conducted. The date must correspond to the date on which this meeting was held. So in this case, it's supposed to say 1 October 2020. Chair is the main person leading the meeting. And then the secretary is usually the person taking notes or the person assisting the chair in conducting the specific meeting. I hope all of this makes sense to you. You can also refer to Activity 5 on pages 92 and 93 of your textbook to see another example of a minute for a meeting. Read through these pages and make sure that you understand what is expected of you. Then you are going to do Activity 7. You don't need to do the activity in the textbook, just write Activity 7 as the heading for your specific work. Your meeting needs to be about your matric farewell. So you are going to write your own notice and agenda for the meeting as well as the minutes of that specific meeting. There is no word count for this activity. Just remember to use the correct format for each. You must have a first and final draft for each piece. Also remember to discuss all the important aspects surrounding the farewell. For instance, the venue, the theme, the date, the time, who will be responsible for organizing what. Then also whether you will have fundraisers to maybe make some money to pay for some of the expenses regarding the farewell. Have fun!